All right, everyone, I will welcome you once again to today's webinar. We are going to go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be talking about using data to grow your retail footprint. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available to all post events, so you can watch it again and again and share it with your friends. For an optimal webinar experience, all participant lines have been muted today, but if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to type them into the Zoom chat panel. We'll do our best to answer those questions throughout the webinar or at the end during a Q&A session. It is now my pleasure to introduce today's hosts. My name is Casey. I'm the one that's been speaking here the past couple minutes. I'm your moderator for today's event. First up, we've got Jim Jurcevich joining us today from Columbus, Ohio. Jim started investing in the Columbus Running Company just a year or so after it opened, and today he manages footwear buying for all of their four stores. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me today, Casey. We're thrilled to have you on board, as we are Jimmy Richberg, Director of Support here at Ricks. Thanks, Casey. And Jim is busy getting phone calls. I love it. So let's just jump right into it. I will go ahead and hand this off to Jimmy. Um, Jimmy, kick us off. What is, um, what's growing your retail footprint all about? Uh, yeah, thanks, Casey. So um, right now we're in, I would say, a very competitive and rapidly changing retail market. So um, you know, growth is essentially a great way um, to stay competitive in the market. And obviously growth can mean um, a lot of different things. Uh, so, but regardless of the way that you're looking at it, um, it's going to, it, when done correctly, um, can have a great benefit to you in terms of giving you access to new customers, carrying different types of products, and just a different way to kind of look at your business to kind of keep up with the ever-changing market and the expectations of your customers. Um, so when we talk about retail growth, it's, it's kind of an odd time to be thinking about it, given that all you hear in the news when it comes to uh, the retail market is the retail apocalypse. Um, but it's important to kind of pay attention to the nuances of what's happening in the market and really, uh, you know, look at the stores that are closing, the businesses that are, you know, closing down. Um, a lot of what we're seeing is coming from the, either some bigger box or the mall type of shopping. Um, and I would say a lot of this change is being driven by essentially mainly the, the change in customer expectations. So uh, customers have a, a growing need for convenience in their shopping as well as a, you know, a need for a more personalized experience. And any of the retailers that aren't able to kind of adapt to this change are the ones kind of feeling the effects of, of customers going elsewhere. Yeah, I think growth is focused all about getting, looking for that extra opportunity, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be adding more square footage of that, it can be just doing more with what you already have. Yeah, and that's a great point, Jim, because I think uh, as we talk about growth, it's, you know, it's easy to say, well, if I'm going to grow, I'm going to add additional doors, but you don't have to limit it to just that. Um, growth can mean, you know, moving to a location with additional or larger square footage. It can mean adding an e-commerce operation to your existing um, you know, you're just getting brick and mortar. Uh, it really all depends on what's the best fit for your business, for your market, and for your customers. Um, but regardless of which strategy that you choose to take or which path, um, the most important thing that you can do is, um, as we've said in many of the webinars previously, uh, data is kind of the, the present and the future of retail and um, how you're going to develop and implement strategies and make decisions. So if you have all of, you know, using all the information that you have at your disposal to help make decisions in terms of what path you go down and how you implement, you're going to have a much better chance of success than without that type of information. So as we talk about creating this growth strategy, um, we'll go through a couple different items here. And, you know, what we'll do is um, I'll kind of talk about these items from a high level and then I'll turn it to Jim to talk about it and to add a little bit of real world experience and kind of how Columbus Running has thought about these things when they've expanded their footprint. So the items that we're going to talk about are just defining your goal in general. So what growth means to you, um, analyzing your data. Um, ensuring the stability of your original location in terms of, you know, expanding to new locations, um, letting the opportunities available to you define when you make these decisions, and ultimately how to utilize technology to help scale your business. Um, so, Jim, why don't you go ahead and give us kind of a brief overview of the, the Columbus running strategy, um, and then we'll dive into more detail as we get into each of these sections. 
Okay, just kind of a brief overview from us. We've uh, we've been in business 14 years here, so we've gone. We've either opened or moved a store about every three, three and a half years here. So we continue to grow. I think each time we've opened, the the goals have been different. It's ranged everything from originally we started off growing to add more, add a larger selection for our customer, be able to do more volumes. So we could add more brands to the our most recent opening where we are really looking towards the area of our market that was growing the fastest and looking to put a location there, I think. So it's, it's changed over time, but I think each time we've kind of looked at those goals and what we we're trying to do. And we've always made sure we had stores we could run from was always high on our priority list and making sure the, the data, the numbers, the dollars, all those pieces kind of line up and made sense as, as best as I could. Cause when it comes to the growing and adding, adding doors, I don't know if there's necessarily always ever a great time to do it. All right. Great. Thanks, Jim. So um, as we dive in here, we'll talk about step one, which is defining a growth goal. So first and foremost is what does growth mean to you and your business? Does that mean, you know, expanding to more square footage? Does it mean opening additional locations? Uh, does it mean just adding an e-commerce business to your brick and mortar? Um, so you really kind of first step is to decide what that looks like for you. And then from there, you can kind of develop what the plan is. Um, you know, you want to make sure that the decision that you're making ultimately is the right fit for your business, for your customers and what's happening in the market. Um, so, and doing so in a way that's going to be sustainable um, and again, makes the most sense. So um, Jim, if you want to talk a little bit about how you guys decided what growth meant to you and the, the resources and the decisions that you made to get there. So growth to us has always been our number one goal is always to kind of do better than we did the year before. So growth has probably most recently over the last couple of years has been kind of pursuing that, that online store, uh, getting more growth on that online channel to kind of supplement our brick and mortar locations. Uh, we've also kind of looked to grow from a, improve our branding and overall cohesiveness of all our locations together. Uh, we've also, probably the, the biggest change for us has been how we handle inventory on a daily basis and using what we have, have on hand to kind of help grow and meet those customers' needs. Um, we've looked at before opening stores, I think the, that in determining that threshold of affording expansion has always been one of our trickiest ones, and we've used a variety of options from SBA loans to investors to, you know, friends and family to kind of take advantage of those opportunities for new places when they've made themselves available to us. And when it comes to kind of minimum viability, usually we do uh, three-year projections. And so we do uh, kind of what we think it'll be, kind of a worst case scenario, and then taking into account inventory levels and probably the biggest thing and one of the hardest to take into account is staffing current how to, how new spots will affect current staffing as well as how much manpower we'll need for the new spot. Um, thanks, Jim. Yeah. So, and I think you made a few good points there. Whereas when you decide on what path you're going to take from a growth standpoint, thinking, you know, far ahead in terms of what all of your needs are going to be. So in the case of Columbus running where you're adding different, you know, additional locations, uh, that's going to mean ordering more inventory and making sure it's the right inventory. It's going to be, you know, possibly adding more staff. Um, it's, you know, adding, it's more than just opening the additional location. It's all the resources that go into kind of making that location successful. So uh, once you make that decision, kind of thinking forward in terms of all the things that are going to be required to make it successful. Um, so we'll keep going through. So step two is analyzing data consistently. So, um, you know, I would argue this is one of the, the more important steps that you have in this process. Once you've made your decision on terms of how you want to grow, utilizing all the information that you have at your disposal is going to be incredibly important to determine the to develop and implement your strategy for going down that growth path. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different retailers over the years, you know, struggling or 
grappling with the decision of do I open a new location? Uh, do I expand my existing one? You know, what's the best fit for me? Um, and a lot of it comes down to just paying attention to, you know, what your customers want and need, where your customers are coming from. So knowing your market um, and knowing, you know, if you want to expand, um, are you going to move to a location that's still going to be convenient for um, your existing customers? Is it going to allow you to carry more product that they're interested in? Um, if you want to open an additional location, uh, does the market you're looking at make sense? Um, is it you know, good foot traffic? Are you going to get some of your existing customers and maybe provide them a more convenient location to shop in? Um, is it an opportunity to gain new customers that may have not found you before based on your location? Um, and what type of product um, is also an important consideration when you know opening that additional location because uh, you may have two locations that are within, you know, let's say 20, 30 minutes of each other and may require two very different product assortments uh, based on the type of customer that you have shopping there. Um, so, Jim, you want to add in some additional context here? Yeah, we do. Uh, when it comes to kind of looking for new locations, we do do some kind of like heat mapping based on the, our customer zip codes, where people are coming from shopping for us and looking for those areas for the kind of a large portion of customers that are traveling the farthest to come see us and how do we, you know, maybe a new location doesn't necessarily make sense, but how can we use, whether it's local delivery, the online store, group runs, can we put, do something in, in that area to kind of have a little bit of more exposure there and really help those customers that are coming from there if a location doesn't make sense demographic wise. Uh, we definitely look at that. I think when opening a new location, we try to assume that stuff will sell at the same rate it does at our kind of our first store. Uh, but we did find quickly and being able to adjust kind of quarterly the the mix, the size run, because we definitely have stores that are that 30 miles apart where our average size is a whole size difference between the two stores and the product mix is different just based on what customers are coming in looking for. And Jim, would you say there was kind of like a break point where you're, you and your team would decide, you know, is it better to just find a way to make the process more convenient for some of these customers who are farther away in terms of doing local delivery or, or the like, or saying, you know, I think we really have enough opportunity in this market to warrant an additional location to serve this market? I think the big kind of fact for us has been just the overall growth of Columbus and looking for those communities, those pockets. We do, we tend to do smaller stores. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit sometimes easier for us to put stores in certain places. So that's been looking at that overall kind of community growth and having that, that vibe that we're really looking for is, is probably just as important as having that, demographics of kind of that household income numbers, things like that go. Great, thanks. So moving on to step three, where we're talking about kind of ensuring the uh, stability of your existing location. So let's say you're going to expand and open a new location, um, making sure that this business is financially viable and is successful on its own is going to be a really important factor before we consider opening an additional door. Um, a lot of the time, especially if you have a, a second location that's close enough to your existing location, you're going to see, um, you know, that second location will take some of the sales of your original location just because it's more convenient for some of your existing customer base to shop there. Um, so as you're looking at this, you know, as you're thinking forward, um, know that they may, that is very well a possibility where you may have, uh, you know, some of your customers are just going to shop at the new location. And um, as you're analyzing your growth with the additional location, thinking about it from a market standpoint. So how well is your market doing? So the total growth of, you know, your business, uh, with all locations versus just looking at the comparison sales um, of the original location. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, make sure that the products that you're carrying and the, the brands that you're going to choose to carry in the location are also doing well in the existing business. Um, you know, you may find that you're going to want to bring over the things that do very well in the existing location to the new location. And you may also find that you'll bring in some items in the new location that may not have done very well um, in the existing location, depending on, you know, where the mark, what the customers are looking for and where the market is. Um, so it's important to kind of keep that in mind. Um, and don't be afraid to work with your brands and your vendor partners as well as you're making, making this decision. 
you know, whether if you're going to expand to a new location, it's going to be important that they're kind of a partner in that. So they know you're going to be ordering more inventory. You're probably going to be trying different things to see what works and what doesn't. Um, and having some you know, flexibility in terms of that partnership will be very helpful. Um, Jim, what do you have to add here? Yeah, I think the one thing we've noticed while our stores are close enough together, we find that customers definitely cross shop our different stores, which was kind of something we didn't anticipate. Uh, a lot of the customers like the fact that we do have a, they're familiar with our brand and we have a store close to where they work, but also close to where they live. So they will shop different stores based on kind of where they're at in their day. It also allows us to be able to get them stuff if they're shopping by where they work and we don't have it there, we can have it to them, you know, closer to their house later on that evening when they get home and get ready to run. So I think looking at that was something that, that was kind of unexpected for us, but it goes along with building that trust. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, from your brand perspective, uh, you know, how did you guys choose to work with the brands when it came to expanding to different locations? You know, what was the communication like? Um, you know, was there a kind of a, a partnership where you're, you're working together to make sure that you've got the right product for each location? Yeah, I think there's always, you know, we always got to be willing to experiment, right? We always need those styles that make us uniquely run specialty right things they might not find other places so we still need to have those those shoes that are in your top 10 but not being afraid to experiment and try stuff especially if it's something slightly different that people are coming and asking for and listening to that customer and giving them what they want but i mean i think it's the the hard part when it comes to opening new locations sometimes is talking with the vendors because they each handle it differently from some what kind of once you have an account, you can open kind of as many doors as you want and other ones evaluated on a door by door basis. Cause we don't, we still don't have all the brands at all the stores. So. Great. And, you know, just uh, going off what you said there, you know, experimenting based off of kind of what you th- the customers seem to be looking for. It all kind of ties back to what we talked about at the beginning of the conversation, which is a lot of this decision is going to be based off of what are the wants and needs of your customers. Um, And that's your customer today and your future customers, ideally. Um, You know, can you meet their ever-changing needs for convenience and experience uh, by carrying the right product and offering the right type of service? Yeah, we keep adding to it uh, between the online store, local delivery, um, people, people want convenience. And I heard recently a definition of what a loyal customer is, right? A loyal customer is somebody that will shop with you when it is an inconvenience for them. And so how many, how convenient do we have to be? How many times does somebody have to shop with us conveniently before they become that loyal customer where they're willing to wait a couple days for a shoe or they're willing to wait for us to order something. So, trying to get those customers to that point where they are loyal. Great. So step four is a little bit focusing on, you know, when to kind of make the decision for making this, whatever type of expansion or growth that you're looking for. Um, And a lot of it needs to be kind of defined on, you know, what opportunity is available to you. So uh, you may find that, you want to open an additional location and um, you know it makes sense to do so as quickly as possible as soon as you can kind of get all your ducks in a row um, you have all the information that you need um, and you know the sooner you can get that door open the sooner you get customers shopping and you may find that um, specific locations or markets that you're looking at just aren't really ready for an additional location or for that type of you know retail uh, market so you may push off and decide uh, but i think it ties back to looking at again, utilizing your data and looking at all the information you have at your disposal to decide, you know, what is the right opportunity and when is the right opportunity to do that. Um, so, Jim, as you guys were thinking about expanding, what, uh, what were kind of the factors that led you to say, okay, I think it's, it's time for something, for an additional location and ultimately to say, yep, the, the opportunity and the time is right, let's go for it. Um, we, we started off looking at the, When we opened our second store, we looked at the area of town that was most underserviced, right? We weren't looking to go head to head with anybody. We wanted to be in a part of town where there was, there was enough runners, there'd be enough traffic, but nobody had put a store there. So we started there with our newest store. We actually looked, we, we knew the kind of road we wanted to be in town, but it was a 
two mile stretch where we could have been anywhere. And we actually looked almost two years before we found kind of what we thought was the right spot in terms of the feel of our company. It would be right for as well as the foot traffic and everything like that kind of made sense. So some of our decisions happened relatively quickly within four to six weeks. And other times we've spent two years trying to find that right spot. Uh, and would you say as best as you try to kind of have a timeline and a set idea of, you know, how things are going to roll out, it's, it's definitely better to be flexible and, you know, kind of expect the unexpected as you're going through this process. Yeah. I think anybody that's, that's built out, especially when you're looking at building stores, I mean, it's, it's got to have a lot of flexibility to it. Cause when you're talking about permitting and cities and everything like that being different, um, it can, a number of things can really throw off your game plan as far as when you were planning to open, how long it's going to take and things like that. We've opened a store and as quickly as we've gotten the keys and opened the store in six weeks. So sometimes it can go pretty quick and other times it can take a couple months. So making sure you have the kind of the finances and the plan behind it to handle it. Great. Um, and finally, we'll go into step five, which is scaling with technology. So just as data has become kind of uh, increasingly important in terms of, you know, retail and retail decision, uh, so too has technology and the technology to kind of, one, you know, collect and produce the data that you need to help you make these decisions, but ultimately to make your business more efficient as you expand. And that could be any type of the, you know, the growth or expansions that we've talked about here today, whether that's e-com or bigger square footage or an additional location, having the right technology that can help make your business as efficient as possible so that you can focus on serving your customer um, is going to be an incredibly important factor as you make these decisions. So you want to ensure that um, you've got the right technology. It's going to, you know, you know how you're going to utilize that technology to improve your processes um, existing or new process that you'll have to create as you change, uh, you know, and, and grow in your business. Um, and so Jim, why don't you touch a little bit on how you guys have utilized technology as your business has changed and um, how you used it to kind of make things more efficient for you? We use, I mean, I'm trying to think of the best way. The, we use data to manage your inventory a lot. I think business, running stores, especially when they start out, people start off kind of wearing a lot of hats, right? We, people tend to want to start off working the floor and then be promoted to kind of a manager and then get into a buying role. And so that person working the floor is sometimes looked as kind of the lone rung on the totem pole, where I think as you continue to grow, that person working the floor, that person working with that customer becomes more and more valuable. And so we look at the, the buying apparel buyers, accessory buyers, footwear buyers, um, people handling delivery, the managers, as kind of the support staff for those people really working the floor. So how do we use the data we have on, on customers, inventory, what time of day do we need more staff? When are we selling more stuff to try to make it a great experience for those customers, but also to make sure that that staff is happy and that we're also using extra location, not to kind of cut costs. So we're spreading the cost of, of having a buyer across multiple locations versus just one. All right, great. Um, so, you know, knowing that you guys utilized, you know, your strategy um, to expand your business over the last several years, we can see kind of um, some of the results you've gotten from that. So if you want to hit on some of the highlights here and kind of talk about what, what growth has done for Columbus running as a whole. I think as a whole, we've, you know, we keep growing, we've grown year over year. Uh, I think especially the last kind of year and a half has really shown we're doing a few things right with the industry kind of being flat, if not a little bit down. The big one for us has been really increasing those turns so that when new product is updating, we're not, we're not stuck with a lot of old things. We're, we're kind of maximizing that profit on each, each thing we get out the door. We've been, We've been spending a lot. I think the the one number I'd like to see bigger is that kind of average ticket value. Um, while it's up eight percent, I'd like to see I'd like to see that number get higher. And that's I think where we've really been kind of focusing recently in the last six months. All right. 
Thanks, Jim. Um, so to kind of wrap it up a little bit here, um, we went through kind of a, a high level look at a, a way to think about a growth strategy. And I think some of the big takeaways um, that you can have from this are one, you know, don't let the the current state of the retail market scare you away from considering, you know, any type of growth. Um, again, really pay attention to what's being affected by the, you know, the quote retail apocalypse and what type of retailers are being impacted. Um, and know that all of the change that's happening, or at least the majority of the change that's happening in the market right now is driven largely by a change in customer expectation. Um, and that's coming from con wanting, you know, more convenience, uh, wanting a more personalized experience. Um, people are shopping differently than they ever have before because they have more data and information at their disposal than they ever have before. Um, so as when you're thinking about your strategy and uh, you know, how you want to move forward, it's thinking about you know, how is this best going to serve uh, your customer today as well as your future customers and give them the best experience possible. And I think there's always opportunity out there just got to always be looking for it. We keep changing things. We're on probably the third or fourth version of our online store at this point. Um, so not being afraid to, to continue to look outwards and see what you can do better, I think, keeps everybody moving. All right. Well, thank you both so much. That was insanely interesting. And I'm um, now ready to open up my store myself. Um, we will open it to the audience now for Q&A. If you have any questions, feel free to type those into the Zoom chat or Q&A panel. Doesn't look like we have any questions asked yet, which means that Jimmy and Jim did an awesome job. If you do decide that you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at any time. We're happy to answer those questions and chat with you more about growing your retail footprint. Jimmy and Jim, is there anything else you'd like to add as we wrap up here? No, not that I can think of. All right. Well, I'll thank you again both for your time and wish everyone a great day. Thanks, Casey. Thank you.